the man with 700 wives and 300 mistresses. Why did Solomon had to marry 700 wives and kept 300 mistresses? When Solomon ascended the throne, possibly at a tender age of 20, he held immense promise and was bestowed with great opportunities. But alas, the ultimate account of Solomon's life is one tinged with disappointment, despite his promising and exciting start. King Solomon's reign commenced on a high note, after he was proclaimed an heir to the throne by his father, King David. Solomon, as the second child of David and Bathsheba, was fortunate to be born into a family that followed the injunctions of God. Perhaps their deep knowledge and understanding of the way of the Lord positively influenced Solomon's upbringing. Growing up in a palace always on the brink of conflict and war, Solomon's upbringing was not a bed of roses. For example, Solomon witnessed his older brothers, Ammon and Absalom, causing havoc from the front row. At one point, Ammon forced himself on his half-sister Tamar. For that sin, Absalom had him murdered. In fact, during David's waning days, Absalom even declared himself the king, if not for the intervention of Nathan the prophet, together with Bathsheba's swift actions, Solomon's rightful claim to the throne would have been denied. Upon Solomon's accession to the throne, his father David delivered a heartfelt farewell speech, as recorded in 1 Kings 1-4. King David said to his son Solomon, I'm about to depart from this world like everyone else. Be strong, act like a man, and diligently follow the commands and laws of the Lord your God, as written in the law of Moses. Obey him faithfully so that you may prosper in all your endeavors and ensure the Lord's promise to me, continuity of your descendants on the throne of Israel, will be upheld. As long as your descendants walk faithfully with their whole heart and soul before the Lord, you shall never lack a successor. Solomon seems to have heeded this guidance, as seen in 1 Kings 3 verse 3, which says, Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the steps of his father David. In one of the most significant moments of the Old Testament, God appeared to Solomon in a dream, as described in 1 Kings 3 verse 5, and offered to grant him any request. God said to Solomon, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon recognized that he has been presented with a remarkable opportunity to seek something of great significance. He could ask for anything. It was like God gave him a blank check and asked him to fill it in with whatever he desires. Imagine if the Lord were to awaken you tonight and offer the same proposition. What would you ask for? Keep in mind that what you ask for would reveal much about your innermost desires and priorities. Solomon's response to God's offer was a testament to his wisdom and humility. He prayed for discernment and wisdom so that he could be a just and effective king for the people. Solomon sought the ability to distinguish right from wrong, to administer justice wisely among the great multitude of his people. God was immensely pleased with Solomon's choice. In response to his prayer, God not only granted him wisdom beyond comparison, making him the wisest person ever to live, Additionally, God also bestowed upon him great wealth and honor. God promised that if Solomon walked in obedience, keeping his commands like his father David did, he would have a long and prosperous life. And then Solomon awoke, realizing that what he had experienced was a revelation. Solomon was indeed a great king and an exceptional administrator. Driven by his father's vision, he embarked on the ambitious project of constructing a magnificent temple for the Lord. Solomon's prayer for the dedication of the temple marked a momentous beginning for his reign, as recorded in 1 Kings 8 verses 22 to 53. Standing before the altar of the Lord, in the presence of the entire assembly of Israel, he raised his hands toward heaven and offered a magnificent prayer, saying, Lord, the God of Israel, there is none like you in all of heaven and earth. You have faithfully kept your covenant of love with your servants who wholeheartedly follow your ways. You fulfilled the promises you made to my father David, both in word and deed. Now, Lord God of Israel, let your word to David come true. Let there always be a successor sitting on the throne of Israel, as long as they walk faithfully before you, just as my father did. 
This prayerful beginning set the tone for Solomon's reign. However, despite his early promise, Solomon later made two grave mistakes, as recounted in 1 Kings chapter 11. He could not help falling in love for many foreign women, including Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. His involvement with these women would eventually lead to his downfall. By the final count, King Solomon married 700 wives and had 300 mistresses. Although some of these marriages and relationships were political alliances, it was evident that immorality played a part as well. The consequences of these relationships were disastrous. Solomon's example fostered a culture of immorality within the kingdom. As he grew older and became less cognitively agile, he was influenced by his foreign wives, leading him away from wholehearted devotion to the Lord, just as his father David had been. He followed the practices of Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. But how did Solomon manage dealing with these wives and mistresses? Well, he obviously did not manage well, because it was these relationships that led to his disappointing actions and eventual downfall. Solomon's downfall serves as a sobering reminder of the dangers of compromising one's faith and values in pursuit of personal desires and worldly alliances. It highlights the importance of staying true to the Lord and remaining devoted to Him in both good times and challenging moments. As described in 1 Kings 11 verses 7 to 14, Solomon constructed these high places for the worship of foreign gods, and the Lord became angry with him for turning his heart away from the God of Israel. Despite the Lord appearing to him twice and commanding him not to follow other gods, Solomon did not obey. As a consequence, the Lord informed Solomon that he would tear the kingdom away from him and give it to one of his servants. However, for the sake of his father David, the Lord decided not to do this during Solomon's lifetime, but declared that it would happen during the reign of Solomon's son. The Lord also planned to leave a portion of the kingdom with Solomon's son, giving one tribe to him for the sake of David and Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen. To carry out his plan, the Lord raised up several adversaries against Solomon, including Hadad the Edomite, who was a descendant of the king of Edom. Furthermore, Jeroboam, one of Solomon's officials, rebelled against the king. The account of Solomon's life in 1 Kings ends with chapter 11, verses 41 to 43. However, to get further insights into the final chapter of his life, one must turn to another book in the Bible, specifically Ecclesiastes. Despite his pervading sadness and the consequences of his actions, Solomon's legacy includes the authorship of three Bible books, Song of Solomon, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. These books likely reflect Solomon's reflections and realizations about life, wisdom, and the mistakes he made during his reign. Solomon reigned over all Israel for 40 years before resting with his ancestors. His son, Rehoboam, succeeded him as the king of Israel. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon candidly reflects on his pursuit of happiness and the various paths he explored. He found that a life without a relationship with God, the Creator, was ultimately futile, leading to emptiness and pointlessness. Solomon tried to find fulfillment in wisdom, but he realized that these pursuits were like chasing after the wind, fruitless and meaningless. He attempted to seek pleasure and laughter, filling his palace with festivities, but even these indulgences left him unsatisfied. The pursuit of pleasure without a connection to God does not bring true joy and fulfillment. Solomon also tried to pursue luxury and wealth for the sake of happiness. However, he discovered that material possessions and riches did not bring genuine happiness. He sought pleasure in wine and embraced folly, but these experiences failed to provide lasting satisfaction. Solomon engaged in great projects, built houses, planted vineyards, and created beautiful gardens. But none of these material achievements could fill the void in his heart. Finally, Solomon experimented with lust and physical pleasure, but he found that such pursuits could not bring true happiness. Even a harem of 700 wives and 300 concubines were not enough to bring him true happiness. 
The book of Ecclesiastes serves as a reflective account of Solomon's attempts to find purpose and meaning in life through worldly pursuits. His conclusions point to the importance of seeking a relationship with God, as only in His presence can true joy and fulfillment be found. So why did Solomon marry 700 wives and kept 300 concubines? It was primarily for fostering political alliances among the surrounding nations. It was also because of his moral failings. He could not trust God to be the only source of his strength until it was too late. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share, and like this video. Tell me what you considered the saddest aspect of Solomon's life. Do you agree that the women were responsible for his downfall? May our end be better than our beginning. Amen. God bless you.